minutes for each meeting after the meeting so that we get a note of it in the future. And uh, my idea is to do that in a separate file uh, at the same time, because right now it's in the with me. <clears throat> but at some point we can, we can have a separate file. So if you agree, Kevin is usually taking notes or somebody else can do it if he is not available. And then the idea is to put um, uh, decisions and everything in the minutes. Good idea. Where are you going to put the minutes? I can take them, yeah. No, but where are you going to put them? Usually I want Kevin here to take the minutes. This is why I'm like... Yeah. Uh, um, here, I, can, I can take I this anyway. Uh, in fact, if, if more than one person takes minutes, we can then uh, work in the pull request to, to have everything together. Okay. Um, so we've got goals, questions, metrics that we have. So I'm just looking at this right now. I mean, um, so adopting the DNI framework, I think we uh, agreed to that. Um, I guess the use case folder is a discussion I missed. Um, and there was a little bit of exchange online about it. And yeah, we have been, we have been talking about that in, in uh, I think, two different um, meetings. Uh, the idea was to capture, um, let's say, the, the practices of people with metrics. And uh, for that, right now, we don't have an instrument because that's not exactly the field use case in the metrics description files because that, those are specifically related to some metrics. And this is, let's say, the other way around. So it's when, uh, uh, for instance, Ray is, is right now writing with me one of those cases. And Ray is interested in finding out well, what happens with first contributors. And he's interested in seeing how they are called, being contributed and how they can improve the process. So in this case, uh, the, the use case would be learning about uh, code review to first contributors. And then the idea is to uh, find out which uh, questions they have, and from the questions, try to find out the metrics. And uh, the final idea is that this helps us to find out which of the metrics are interesting and how people are using the metrics. And this would be a way of letting people not specifically interested in metrics, but in using metrics to contribute. And if so you like, remember, since we were talking about this uh, uh, a while back, just mm -hmm. trying to find out ways of people not experts in the computing, the metrics, and all of that, contributing with their expertise in as users, let's say. Yeah, and I mean, I think you know my reflections on that are, and I think the discussion in, in the online forum was that the DNI group is using a Google Doc to perform the same function in their group if I'm right, so they don't have the use cases in the repository. And I think we also had an email exchange about characterizing some of these use case like items inside of the, uh, like a blog post or something like that. And so my only question about putting them in the repository and treating them like code is, does that limit the visibility of uh, an evolving discussion? Is Is that, and I guess I'd like people on the chaos enterprise in general to like know that if they want to understand, if they want to know where the use cases for the working groups are, that if we're going to follow, like we've we've changed things to follow the pattern that DNI follows, so we should follow it all the way because the point is to be consistent. And if I'm understanding what they do, they don't have them in the repo. And so my question is really sort of my question about whether we should do that or not is is entirely around how do we do this in a way that makes it so that every working group looks the same from the outside so that somebody coming to chaos can find the thing that they're looking for, regardless of the working group. So I'm, I'm also interested in consistency, but my, my guess is that both diversity and inclusion and, and we are looking for uh, how to do this. And they are finding some ways and maybe we can find some different ways. And maybe after some experience, we may try to, to coordinate that. So in some cases, we are already converging. In some others, maybe not yet, because we don't have enough, enough expertise. But if you prefer to go with Google Docs or something, I, don't, I honestly, I don't know what they are doing. If yeah. you prefer to do that, 
Let's mm. so my, my main concern there is the other way around. Now I would like people coming to the repository and finding everything they need. And there is no way of oh, having yeah. a discussion on a Google Doc, for instance, while you have you can have it on a pull request. But I'm ready to experiment anything when we want and then evaluate later. My, my main concern here, in fact, is that maybe we're losing too much time on procedures. And, uh, yeah, I know, exactly. And, so and that's, and it's like one of my agenda items for today. Okay, yeah. I, I, I just want it, like, I'm in the working group, and I'm, this has moved so much, I'm having a hard time knowing where things go and what goes where. Like, I'm in the working group, like, you and I are the most active members, and, and I got cut off from the last meeting, but the more this evolves, the more confused I get. Okay, so that, that's <laughs> like, the, idea of, the idea of the minutes was, was trying to avoid that. Yeah. Because in the minutes, we should be capturing everything. So yeah. uh, what, well, I, know that, I know that we're capturing everything. It's just like, okay, the, I guess the use cases, I, maybe, um, I guess let's just, like I'm, I'm reticent to contribute anything right now because I'm not sure what goes where. Um, all of this moving around has just made it harder for me to follow because I thought on the one hand, I thought the, I thought the value system we were employing was that we were just going to do what DNI was doing. And so it seems like we went so far to do what DNI is doing and then we, then now we're stopping and I'm just like, is I'm just having a hard time understanding. Um, like I just, I just need like kind of some organizing like rule set. So like if I want to write a use case, um, so what do you mean is We're, that we better don't have use cases or what? No, I think we need use cases. And then the, so the, so like when I've done use cases in a software repository. So what I, do you mean is that I, you prefer to have use cases in Google Docs? No, I'm, 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 I guess I'm talking this through. Um, and I'm thinking about when I've had use cases written out in a repository before, they've followed a, a certain structure, right? Like I include, there's like, seven or eight headings, I'd have to pull out old examples to come up with them. But actually, I think uh, chaos began with some high level use cases that had most of those headings. Um, and so we've had we kind of began organizing this around some use cases. And I think now that we're into the details, the use cases are probably more elaborate. And do we want to follow a format? And if we're experimenting, we probably don't want to specify a format. And I guess if we want to do it, in the repository, then where do we, I, I guess, I guess that's okay. I mean, putting it in the repository is okay. Really? So the majority of the DNI work just occurs in the repo, really. I mean, they just handle it through pull requests. Yeah. Uh, they, but, they but when we asked, but we asked Georg about use cases specifically, he pointed us to a bunch of Google docs. They do so, have a lot of Google docs. They work so they're, on. They're not doing everything in the repository. In fact, not even close. Oh, in terms of use cases, I thought you were just talking well, in about. Terms of, in terms of also the, so the use cases in my view are sort of the ideation part. The, we haven't worked this out yet. And so this is, and so they're using Google Docs and the advantage of a Google Doc is it lets you see the updates as they come. Um, and the disadvantage of the way we're doing, if we do it, um, I'm, so, I mean, I, don't, I guess I'd rather just, uh, yeah. So uh, again, uh, what I only tried to do is to write a procedure, and that's what I did in the pull request. And the procedure is based on pull requests and files. But if you prefer to try with something based on Google Docs and something else, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy. So I'm interested in having the use cases and try any way to have them. And if you feel like uh, Google Docs or whatever is better, so let's try. Let's try for a couple of months, and then we can decide. So I don't mind. The only uh, thing is, yeah. I, I feel like we should find a way of having that, so yeah. that we can start writing the use cases, which is what yeah. you know what, what we want to do, right? Right. Yeah. No. I. And do we have headings that we want in the use cases, or a structure that we want to follow, or do we want it to be more open ended? <clears throat> so for now, I'd like to, to start with a couple of them and see what happens. And at some point, we need to structure them. But for me, it doesn't make sense to try to structure them right now because okay. we really don't know what's going to be in. So I have the idea they need to have a goal, they need to have questions, and they need to have metrics. Yeah. Probably they need to have a description and, and, and how this has been used and stuff like that. 
but honestly, uh, right now I don't know more. So I'm starting to work with Rai in one and with uh, another one with uh, somebody from Uber. And uh, in both cases, I would, I, I would, I was intending to do it in an open way so that people can come and see the pull request and comment on it and say, maybe you need some, uh, some fields or maybe you need to adhere to this structure or whatever so that we can discuss, or discuss on the pull request. But alternatively, we can do that in Google Docs too, either with, with the help of the mailing list or, or maybe just with comments in the Google Docs. So right now, it doesn't matter, I think, for me. Yeah, okay. So you've created the, I say you've created the directory here. Um, let's try it. Let's not, I understand now a little bit better what's happening. I think, I think our intention of the process being the same as DNI isn't quite, I'm not, I really don't think it's what we're doing. I mean, I think we've made some changes that make us more like DNI, but I, I do think that we're following a distinct process that somebody from DNI couldn't walk into this repository or our working group and know where things are. In, any, in any case, uh, um, I understand your concerns, Sen, and something yeah. that we can also do is, uh, I can amend a bit the readme saying something yeah. like, if the people doing the use case prefer to use Google Docs or something else, they can. Yeah. And, well, and I'm not, I don't even have these strong opinions myself, Jesus. No, I'm no, just, I, I understand. I'm going back and reconciling our choice to be like DNI. and i okay. and it just doesn't seem like we actually are anyway. And, and I think that's okay. Um, maybe it was just really some parts of what we were doing that we wanted to be like DNI. And I misunderstood. I, I, feel, I feel like both of us need to be like the other. I mean, they need to be like us and we need to be like them. Uh, yeah. Once we have enough, enough experience to know what works. But that's why I was saying, if the user writing the use case or mainly writing the use case is more comfortable with Google Docs, we could allow that too. And at yeah. some point when the, when the document is ready, I mean, with everybody got the comments and everything, we can dump that into a file easily. So it's, it, that's not a, a, a problem. We can even include that into the procedure or wait until if somebody asks. Because uh, the thing is to make it easy for contributors, in this case, people working with metrics or whatever, to write the use cases. So we can start with pull request and files. We can say in the same file, if you prefer to use Google Docs, please do, or whatever. What do you yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, and then just ask people to maybe edit a use. So the way I've, I merged the use case one, I'm like, I agree. Um, I, I understand. And it's like, like you said, it's like, let's just get to the work. Um, okay. So okay, in uh, that case, if, if you want, they can amend my <coughs> uh, uh, saying this. So this is for people willing so, to use files. If you want to, to use Google Docs, please link the, the, the provide here the link to the Google Doc so that people can contribute and let you use Google Doc in those specific case. And at some point, let's mark when the, 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 the use case is ready. And in that case, I volunteer to dump it into a file in the, into the repository so that we can have everything together. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just looking at the, I'm understanding a little bit more about um, what you're doing or what you're proposing here. And I'm following it. Um, okay. I think I think my brain was stuck on we're supposed to be like DNI and this isn't like DNI and now I don't understand. Um, okay. Part of that's because I missed the meeting last time. Well, so let me let me make a few comments. So, looking at the repo structure, yeah, for GMD, it's actually not far off of DNI with this concept no, of focus no, areas. It's, it's much closer than it was. That's for sure. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's a huge positive. Right yeah. there. I mean, yeah. naturally, the work groups will work a little differently because they're yeah. constructed with different people. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, right off the bat, I think they actually look quite similar, which is all I was really hoping for. Okay. And, and I think I took maybe the idea that they're supposed to be the same a bit too literally. No. I think it's just that, that first high-level look at the repositories with the focus areas. <coughs> those are now very consistent. And then kind of the drill down on the particular metrics within those focus areas, that's very consistent. No, but, but in any case, I'm, 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 I think we should converge in the future, maybe a bit more, but we can discuss this after experience. 
So after we have some use cases and they have use cases, we can decide at some point, well, let's use this structure or even let's allow people to use both systems because depending on the user, maybe the user is more, yeah. more familiar with Google Docs or with GitHub or whatever. So that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with trying to converge in the future as much as possible so that repositories are at, as, as, as more um, equal as possible. But still, I also think Thing that we need some room for experimentation because they are basically experimenting and we are experimenting too. So that's it. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a conclusion, if, if you are happy, what I'm going to do is to amend my pull request, stating this thing. If you prefer to use Google Docs, please do. In that case, just link to the document mm -hmm. and uh, tell everybody so that they can contribute. Let's use Google Doc comments for the contributions, right? And when the when the use case you feel it is ready, say that in the mailing list so that people can go and at some point dump that into the repository so that we have a copy of it. Okay, that's that's okay. So I, I can do that with my. No, program. that's good. That's good. I also uh, gave a a link in the chat window. This is the use case structure that SPD <laughs> uses. Ah, uh, wiki. That's another way that you could do it. It's sort of like a within GitHub. But yeah. listen, that wasn't my point of that link. No, no, no. It's, got the, it's got the headers. It's got the headings in there, so we could. And these are these are very similar to the headings that I've seen and used before with the triggers and the preconditions and the success scenarios. That's that's that, that's the only reason I sent it was just for the headings. Yep. I mean, that's so if, if you have a, an structure for the use cases, we can start with it too. So I don't mind. I don't have any specific structure in mind. I was thinking about using what the people in DNI are using or something similar. But uh, in my mind, as I said, it's basically goals, questions, metrics, and some descriptions in the middle. So, but if you have some template or something, I'm happy to use it. Well, I don't uh, know what you think of that. Did you see that link, Jesus? I yeah. Which, which link do you mean? Look in, in the chat. In the chat. Look in okay. The chat. Yeah. Okay, I'm checking. I mean, it's pretty classic use case structure that I've seen many, many, many times. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I, I would be adding uh, probably, uh, I think that the, the goal could be like the title or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. well, there, there's a goal in context, right? So both of things. And uh, I'm, missing, I'm missing the questions. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. So this could be modified. Yeah, the questions. Yeah. 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 And in the end, the metrics, of course. But the rest, I can, uh, I, I can basically use that. So I, I don't. I, I find that's quite useful. I think yeah. this is a really, you like you said, Sean, a really classic structure. And yeah. like I said, SPVX uses this another LF project. And okay. if, if it's just if you want to add the questions and the goal. Piece yeah. So it, what, what I can do, if you want, is to add. Basically, I think it would be the, the, the questions and the metrics. Mm -hmm. And for the rest, I can keep this. I can produce a template based on this if you want. Yeah, I think we also, I think the use cases need a space for expressing something about temporal aggregation. In my conversations with people, how they're thinking about actual use cases has to, is really fairly grounded in how frequently they have to report. And in most cases, that's monthly. And I think if, if we're getting information like that about the, because the metrics themselves technically don't include these, these filters or, or parameters in them, but I think the use cases possibly ought to because how, these, how, these, how people who are the primary actors are consuming the metrics is by a time period, right? They're never consuming it outside the context of some time aggregation. Okay, we can include something specific for that, or, or we can, or we could use notes, which is an empty field now. now oh, yeah. For that for that kind of stuff. I mean, anything which is not in the in the template. But but they agree. In many cases, you need to define aggregators or something. My my only concern there is I was trying to keep this to the let's say close to the user, not close to the people thinking on metrics, so that they can really say this is what I need. And now. Yeah go and work and find out uh, how to produce the metrics for this. So, yes. but I, I understand what you mean. So, uh, the, the, that could... I mean, I'm saying I've talked to people and, and they've said they every everything that, that community managers and other folks are telling me about metrics mm -hmm. is, is sort of wrapped in this. I look at it monthly or mm -hmm. I look at it weekly. 
Um, yeah. So it, it could be it could be something in uh, either have some specific field or other ways stating somewhere I need to do this weekly or I need mm -hmm. to do this uh, monthly or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like you said, we could always evolve if if there's always time stuff in the notes, we can move it back, make it a field. Then what I can do is to produce a, a pull request with a proposal for a template. Okay. And we can discuss over it, but I'm, I'm going to try to capture all what that we are saying now. Okay. Based it on this use case. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, fine. So in short, I'm I'm amending my uh, pull request, including the possibility of using uh, Google Docs, and uh, I'm producing a new peer uh, with a template based on the this template by SPDX and uh, the conversation we had. Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds good. That works for me. Okay, great. Then uh, for for the rest of the um, let me check it for the rest of the repository. I mean the, the other staff that that we want to do. I was thinking about having some something like a procedure or something um, a file where we explain how to contribute. Could be also contributing uh, because right now we are starting to have several directories and people can get a bit lost about how to contribute and what to do. Usually, like a, what I've done before is just a how to contribute page that's linked off of the README. Okay. Probably pretty close to the top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, just, I just put another link in the chat, which is the DNI contributing doc. I did not get that. I, have, I was looking a look. I, I had. Okay. Let there. Me, let me check out oh, that one. Now I see it. And they actually just put a link to this on every single markdown page. Yeah, when, when I was looking at it, I found it like a too procedural in the sense that it basically says how to contribute to GitHub. And that's fine, we need something like that. But I was thinking more about uh, uh, how we are producing metrics. So this idea of I we see. are going to start, uh, basically the discussion we had during the last two meetings, which was we are going to start with the goal, with the focus areas, for each of the focus areas, we're going to try to describe the goals and everything, and every goal is going to be uh, uh, split into questions, mm -hmm. and, and the question yep. we're going to get the metrics. And the questions are here, and the metrics are there, and everything, so that people can come and say, okay, this is the procedure. This is what if you just What if you just took this markdown that I just put in there and yep. called, called this, like, how to contribute procedurally, and then above this, you have what you just talked about, which was, okay. you know what I mean? So then there's a procedural component, but there's more of a... Yeah, 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 I understand and I agree. Yeah, so it would be like two, two, way, two ways, so two, two kinds of, contrib of contribution. Yeah. One would be the procedure and the other one would be the how to do the staff. I mean, how to, yeah. What, what are we structure. looking for with respect to yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just exactly. the process and the structure, just like everything yeah. in software, right? So your, the goal, question, metric, hierarchy is that's the structure of contribution, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, I think we should have that somewhere also. That that sh I mean, I think stating that clearly in the README actually. Um, and well, like I said, uh, DNI puts it on every Markdown page, hmm. just at the top. Like, want to contribute? Link. That's it. Yeah. It yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. Easy. yeah no, that, that's a very good idea. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So okay. if you want, I can also produce a PR for this. Sure. Okay. Okay. And then if you look at the PRs in the in the repository, there is still another one, which was producing Danny with me and uh, Alberto, which is uh, they add more details to open issues. And here the idea was to uh, basically refine the description of this. 
So the description of this specific metric. This was before we were discussing to move this to another structure and then move, a, move back or and, and everything. So I can, I can solve the conflict, but I wanted to know if you find this is the, the right moment for doing, for doing this, because my, my impression is we can still work at, at both levels. Even, even when we want to go top level, top down, sorry, we can also work at the metrics level by refining them a bit more. What do you think? So, so this is a pull request? Yeah. And I'm uh, this is pull request number, uh, what's the number? Number 20. OK. So there is a bugzilla. This is, he's added open issues. So he's changed it from number of open issues. I don't even see what the conflict is. From, is there another? Yeah, don't worry too much. I can, I can, I can merge the conflict. I think the conflict was due to uh, uh, we were moving the directory at the same time. OK. It looks. Um... So it is more like if you look at it, what, what uh, Danny mainly did was to refine the description and uh, specify a bit more like uh, a couple of cases. Since we are talking about issues and issues don't work the same way in GitHub and Baxilla, it was just a matter of defining a bit more in the specific case of GitHub and the specific case of Baxilla how things work. And then talk a bit more, uh, yes, about uh, what's mandatory for as parameters. So things that you need uh, for calculating or computing. In this case, open issues, you need to know the point in, point in time when you are computing and the statuses. So which kind of statuses you are considering as closed and as open. Since in Baxilla, for instance, you have fixed. And the fixed usually is closed. But you know, it's a different word. So it's, you, you need to map from things like uh, fixed to uh, this is closed. In the case of GitHub, it's pretty much simple because GitHub has the idea of open and closed. And so it's just direct mapping. But for, for Baxilla, it's a bit more difficult. So it, it, it's only that. So it's trying to be precise on what we consider, for instance, as a closed bag, or sorry, a closed ticket in Baxilla, right? Right. So I can, I can, uh, I can fix the conflict which I think is due to the name, but I can check that and re-upload uh, the pull request. But I wanted to check whether you find it convenient to do this now and follow on working with all the metrics to refine them this way. Um, I have a couple of, one question I have um, is, I think there's a few parameters. Um, And this one actually we can ignore. I have I, we always have the question and implementation of how do we um, how do I finish my review? I wanted to pick the aggregation period, um, and also uh, I think. Yeah, I just looked at, I found what the, the pull request was, and I added a comment about the time period. And I think there's always this question about if something, when, a, when issues in particular goes from open to close to open again, you know, essentially the reopening of issues can confound issue metrics in my experience. And but, we'll but, have, but you're talking specifically about the metric open issues? That's the one that Daniel submitted yeah, but uh, usually, usually when you're talking about open, is open at a given moment. All right, in the that's moment. At this moment in time, they're open. I see. Exactly. So that's why they, they are not for a, <coughs> for a period, but it's for a snapshot. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense. You know, that, you On know. this day, these are the issues that are open. Yeah. OK. So right. for, the, for the other one, by the way, this is an English thing. And maybe I'm <laughs> wrong. But I think one thing you, you say open, and the other one you say open it which means they were open at some point and that can be done for a period. So like how many bags we are opening during uh, September. Mm -hmm. But that means opening the uh, ticket, even if the ticket was closed uh, two days later or whatever, but they were open during the uh, September. And a different thing is how many bags we have opened right now, which doesn't mean, uh, that doesn't uh, matter when they were opened, but they are open right now. So, is that so, so point in time is is really 
day of day of day of analysis or reporting, right? Yeah. Well, in fact, you can do that for the past if you want. You can say how many of them were open in September the 9th, uh, uh, 2018. Use that example. So that, that's why it's uh, just uh, the moment that, where you compute the snapshot. And uh, because, for instance, you can uh, be interested in knowing whether the backlog of open issues is growing or not. And for that, you need to compute it, for instance, for the first day of every month. So that you yeah, okay. So I think, I think maybe the parameter isn't point in time. I mean, maybe that's, it wasn't clear to me what point in time was. This is actually like the, this is the day I'm running the report. So as of this moment in time, these are the statistics. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, yeah, just maybe a little bit of elaboration about what point in time is defined as. Um, this is the time for which the snapshot of open issues is computed. That sounds like it could possibly be a range, like show me the, op the issues open during this period of time. But it sounds like my actual, cons my first question about parameterizing it is doesn't apply. This is just literally the number of issues open on day X. Yeah, but you need to, right? the, you need to say the parameter X. Right. The per, which parameter X, like the time, like when I run the, when I run the report, you're, you're saying this is going to be as no, of this. What I mean is, what I mean is maybe you're running the report right now, but you're interested in how many bags you had open one year ago. So on the, say on, on every the first of the year, because you want to compare or something, or, or you want to know every month, uh, the first day of the month, how many bags I have open over time. Right. And, and, and in that case, point in time is every first day of every month, for instance. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so, okay. So, but in any case, Sin, if you find it appropriate to discuss this kind of stuff now, we can follow on on the on the pull request. So, my, my main idea was to 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 just raise the issue whether it makes sense for you to have this kind of discussions right now. For me, it has. That's why we proposed the PR. No, no, yeah. For now we can discuss on the on the PR itself if you want. So no, no problem with that. So the the main yeah. thing, you know, what the discussion is sensible from your point of view. I, no, I, I mean, I think I think help. This has been helpful to talk through this because I think there's there's some ways that it's presented that were a little bit hard to understand exactly what's meant. And okay. I added my comments in while we were talking here okay. that I think will clarify. Okay, then uh, if you want, let's go on with the pull request itself. I'm, I'm going okay. to fix. I'm going to fix the, the problems for um, um, merging it. In any case, and uh, we can follow the usual procedure. If it is not close for the next meeting, we can discuss it in the next meeting specifically. Okay, sounds good. Okay, great. And I think this is everything from my side now. So let me check. Yeah, because the other pull requests. We still have the, the pull request for the use cases forks, which I don't have any trouble with it. So I think we could approve it. I'm, I'm talking about uh, the mm, number two one. Yeah. Yeah, and the actually there are no, number 21 has a conflict. Which yeah, the, the, the only problem for me is the conflict. So if, if somebody can uh, fix the conflict, and I think the conflict uh, also uh, is because of the change in the naming of the, of the, of the files. So if, if somebody can just uh, rename the file, I think Jeez. that's the only problem. Oh, you mean from resources to the new directory that it's in? Uh, to wherever, I don't know the name <clears throat> it is now, but I think it's the only problem. Yeah, I agree. That's that I got stuck at, I don't understand what, uh. what this is. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to write the note to, to Georg so that maybe he can just uh, uh, change the name, right? Yeah, or just move it to, I mean, by change the name, you mean move it to the directory that it's in now. Okay. I think that's what you mean, right? I think so. Okay. Uh, in any case, I'm just saying that he, he may amend the, the commit and he can do it whichever the way he wants. All right.
Uh, and now I remember another thing that I wanted to comment is maybe we should have a description of what we consider as EMD prominently at the beginning of the readme file for the repository. Hmm. And uh, maybe you could uh, do that, I mean, Matt or, 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 or Sin, just because you were working for, with this for a while. Uh, so just to, 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 let's say, define a scope, like the people in diversity and inclusion are doing, just saying, this is the kind of metrics we are talking here. Yeah, I can, I mean, essentially, I can write that. You want okay. that in the readme? I can write that in the paragraph. Uh, that could be great. If you want, right. just include directly into the readme or, or submit a pull request or whatever you may prefer. Well, I, yeah, I think I would, I would, pull, I would do a pull request uh, changing the readme. Okay. I think in this case. Um, in the past, I've fixed things on the readme by just editing it, but. Okay, that's fine. In this case, I think I should submit uh, something. Yeah, this is just to avoid conflicts with other working groups. But I still, I would, I would write it in a, in a broader possible way so that people uh, can, uh, I mean, they are not going to uh, be worried about not submitting to the right thing. Because I'll if, submit, if, I, will, I will make an edit and submit a pull request. Okay, this. perfect. Thank you very yep. much. And now I think I'm I'm done. I don't have more issues for today. Okay. The only thing I wanted to bring up in addition to what we've talked about is it would I think we we might be getting to a point where to keep momentum meeting more frequently might be appropriate. I'm I'm okay trying to continue to work every other week right now, but I just wanted to I guess raise my own I guess for the way I work, it's easier for me if there's just a weekly discussion about things, even if it's brief. Um, but I'm, if we want to just try to continue to work through the repository, I can continue to work that and, way as well. Uh, what we can do, if you want, is to say that every Wednesday there is a meeting. And if I can, I join. So my only okay. trouble is that uh, uh, afternoons are a bit complex for me, and finding the specific slots is difficult. So usually I find some time during the, during the afternoon, but finding, finding a slot exactly at 6, in some cases, interfere with my family life. So is it is it better if we have this? I guess if the meeting was an hour earlier, that would be a little early for people on the West Coast. But yeah, so I, I don't mind. To me, basically <coughs> anything after three is usually uh, it's work time, but it's also family time. So it's it's a bit. But it's my personal problem, so I don't want to bother the rest of the group with that. So no, if, that's if not a problem. I mean, but but what I mean is, if you prefer to have a, a meeting every week, let's do it. I will join as much as I can. And otherwise, it can read the minutes and, com and, and the command of offline or whatever. So I'm happy with having the meetings uh, if you prefer. And still, I would like I would try to join as much as possible. I'll be here every week. Yeah. So maybe maybe do it with. Um, we could do it similar to how we do the general meetings, where it's kind of an open forum every week, and we don't make decisions on a weekly basis, and then we just have a monthly version of the meeting where we confirm any decisions or, so that you don't have to worry about missing a meeting, not mm -hmm. um, being attuned to the decision-making process. Jesus. Um, so that's fine too. So that's yeah. fine. I, mean, I think that, that sort of, I think it makes it, may, may make it easier for people to participate knowing it's every week at this time and it may make it. Okay. Um, well, it may make it, uh, it and, but it's, it's, I think maybe feel less onerous for you if it's, like the, I don't know if it's the last meeting of the month or the first meeting of the month. Probably, uh, I don't know if you won't have two decision meetings back to back on back to back days <laughs> every month. So let's try that model. So I don't mind. And and in a couple of months we can discuss whether it is working or not. So that's that's fine with me. Okay. The, the, in, so in that in that case maybe the deciding meeting should be the last one in the month. So that we do it before the first decision meeting for the whole group, which is usually the first uh, Thursday in the month, right? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like and that. The, in any case, in addition to this, I would say that maybe we can try to be a bit a bit more responsive to pull requests and and so so that um, we also have. Uh, shorter decision times. Yeah, I agree. I think keep I think I think this pull request models it's 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 working. 
I think I think I have to learn to work this way a little bit. I, I'm starting to follow this strategy that you're using here um, for this a little bit more. No, but you know, all of us need to adapt to, to how the others work. So that's why I'm, I'm happy to try with the million. So don't bother. Yeah, but we'll keep up with the pull requests. Um, okay. And do we want to merge? <coughs> so should, when I make the edits to the, to the readme for for the um, the purpose of the metrics group for growth maturity and decline, should I also change the weekly meeting times? Okay, fine. I'll just do that. And uh, Kevin, I suggest that if you are taking notes, maybe you can directly uh, produce a pull request with them, and we can review them and add our own notes on top of those. Is that right with you, Kevin? Kevin. You're muted, Kevin, in case you didn't know that. I'm sure that's all right. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. In fact, that looks he's, like he's what he's sure. It, it's, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. So, okay, fine. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, that looks like what he's done with the previous minutes in any, in any case. Um, I, or is this, was this your pull request, Jesus? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I guess we could, is this pull request one we want to merge then? Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> so you're talking about the, the 27, right? Yep. Is okay, nice. perfect. So uh, if, if Kevin <coughs> agrees, what, what basically he could do is basically doing something similar to the 27 pull request, but for the, to, the, the minutes for today. And uh, what we can do is all the people who participated just say we are okay with that, and that we yep. consider that the, that the minutes are, are funny, right? That works. And, and do we want to take the minutes out of the readme file? Like, we uh, maybe we can produce uh, a new file with that. Yeah, that yeah. could be. So good. when I edit good. the readme, I will also move the meeting notes to a new file. That's fine. Just as That's is. fine. Kevin, if you want to do, do that on just in one. That's a good idea. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think we can keep the we, we meet weekly at this location in there. I don't. I think that's helpful but all the notes probably move. Yeah, basically the, the, the notice about when we meet and the meeting point on that can be in the readme. Yeah. But then can be a link to the minute which will be <coughs> in a separate file. Right. Okay, great. That sounds like a really good plan. Okay, good. All right. I don't have anything else. If you don't, Jesus, I guess we're done. No. Unless yeah, Matt or Kevin have anything to say. I did tell Jesus yesterday at the general meeting that with respect to the risk stuff, yeah, I'm going to start kind of taking, not taking over, but participating in these meetings. I don't think we need a, a fourth meeting on yeah. the week for chaos stuff. So I'm we don't uh, general DNI and GMD and risk and value. So, so this, this would be the, like, it'll be gross maturity and decline, but there'll also be risk discussions in here. Yeah. Uh, that's I think that's, plan. That works for me. I mean, I think. Yeah, that works for me too. If at some point we have a lot of discussion and we need more time, we can split it. But, but well, the reality is, I mean, if I think about risk, if I think about it from a from a licensing perspective, I mean, a lot of these are maturity issues anyway. Yeah, yeah it's, that's right. It's also the same stakeholders. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, if, exactly the same people into this meeting and the risk meeting. I think. Yeah, I mean, if you have a lot of light files with no license declarations, that's not a very, I would contend that's not a very mature program or project. No. Yeah, likewise. So anyway, that, that was all on that. Okay, great. So okay. For, for, for the next meeting, we would be also considering them risk issues in this meeting. Yeah, yeah and I mean, if we can keep yeah. fewer working groups, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's to fine. be honest with you. Fewer meetings. I mean, I don't, I'm okay with the organization on GitHub being different working groups and maybe even the mailing lists being distinct. But in terms That's of fine. meeting time, I think I think risk and growth, maturity, and decline. You, you're right. They do. That this would be a good joint working group meeting to have. Well, the the reality is too. I mean, for the tools that are being considered <laughs> for Grimoire Lab and yeah. Augur. Yeah. I mean, they, they have limitations, right? So, I mean, if you're going to be using Phasology, there's only so much data you can pull out of that <coughs> right. in a meaningful way. So the metrics are going to be, in those regards, somewhat limited to the tools 
Yeah. yeah. That are there. So there's just not going to be a huge, I, I don't think there's going to be a huge robust talk about risk yeah. just because we're so tightly tied to the tooling. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Catch you all later. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.